So hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. I usually do review videos and by usually I mean sometimes but I do want to get back into the swing of doing a kind of review chat video about each episode that we see because so much happens in an episode that you can't really explain it all in a reaction because there's so much going on. So yeah, I just wanted to talk a bit about and I made notes. The bitch made notes. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is something that kind of has been confusing me or had me like, ha? Huh? So we know a lot of this was kind of dream sequence or hallucinations from Carol. It, most of the scenes that Carol was in were kind of hallucinations, right? We know that. But more towards the kind of beginning of that, when we see everyone go into the place, there's a clock on the wall and the clock has no hands. I made a comment about that being like, ha, no hands, just because it was weird. But in Carol's dream, when she checks her watch, when she's sitting down to the table with um, Daryl, when she checks her watch, there's no hands on the watch either. Now, is that something that she kind of dreamt up because she'd seen it? Or do the two of those things connect? Was the whole thing a dream or what? Do you get what I'm saying? Like an inception when you have your little constant. So yeah, that was just something that stood out to me regarding that. Something else that kind of had me thinking mm, was the fact that Daryl was in her dream and not Ezekiel. Now I know that her and Ezekiel have split, they need some time apart or whatever, but in her dream Henry was there. Henry wasn't her and Daryl's kid, it was her and Ezekiel's kid. So why would Daryl be in that dream with her? Surely it would have been Ezekiel she would have dreamt up. It's for that kind of picture perfect life where everything's okay, everything got, went well, everybody was still you know alive and doing well and everything was fine. Surely that would have been Ezekiel, because that would have been her future if Henry had lived, or would it have been? So yeah, the fact that Daryl was there had me like, what? The book that we saw, oh my god, the book with Carol on it and all the fucking kids that she had seen die or that she'd lost or whatever. Oh, that was some dark ass fuckery. The pills as well is another thing um, that's probably going to come into play a bit more and like I want to see that explored because that, again, that's dark shit. But regarding those dreams, I made a kind of offhand comment in the in the reaction where I said, oh, sometimes the nice dreams are, are worse than the nightmares. And I had a few people being like, what the fuck do you mean? If you've gone through shit in your life um, and you've experienced the what could have been dreams, if you've experienced the kind of dreams that showed you what your life could have played out to be, or dreams that show you what you want, and then you wake up and they're not real, that pang, that stabbing pain of when you wake up and you realize oh it's not mine it was a dream that's not my reality for me those dreams hurt more than the frightening nightmares something else of course is a standoff with alpha holy shit carol really went there she really was trying to shoot a bitch down thank god michonne stopped her and daryl just clung on to her for dear life to stop her from rushing alpha um, Daryl and Michonne, their relationship has been really interesting because like after the whole Rick situation happened I feel like they grew closer and they kind of understood the loss because they both loved Rick a lot so once Rick kind of you know up and left they grew closer but seeing how they both handled Carol as well they both knew she was about to do something they both knew something wasn't right as soon as as soon as the bullshit thing happens they both kind of start hovering nearer to her like what are you gonna do and it really was a group effort to keep Carol back. Like I said, Michonne smacked the gun down and then you had Daryl holding onto her. And it kind of reminded me of the barn scene with Sophia, where Daryl was holding Carol back. Except that time it was sadness, this time it was pure and utter rage. And someone mentioned it um, in the comments and I thought it was a good point, where Daryl knows what happens when you retaliate and you're not supposed to. Daryl knows what happens when you lash out out of emotion. There's negative consequences. And Michonne was there too for that. Michonne saw that happen too with the Negan lineup. So I think, I think the two of them kind of trying to sit on her and hold her down and be like, stop it. And the way Michonne instantly apologized for Carol. Carol wasn't there. Carol wasn't at the Negan lineup. So she, she knows what happened, but she doesn't really know. And I feel like for Daryl and Michonne, that fear, that the, the, the lineup fear did probably come back to them in that split second. Where they're like, we know what happens when you fight back against the big bad guy of the moment who's in charge. So I thought that was interesting too. Um, Aaron and Negan was something that I really, really, really loved this episode. Because I felt like it was unpredictable. I feel like Negan was being a little bit too nice. And when he was talking, he was being... It just, I don't know, it was just... He was sarcastic, so there was the Negan element to him. But seeing him be like, you know, I'm not that guy anymore. Seeing him trying, trying to be like, yeah, I've changed or whatnot. I wasn't expecting it. Now I know there has been a time jump and Negan has learned some things. 
But still, I just realised I have a bunch of things running in the background that I should not have running right now. I feel like the thing that kind of shocked me more than anything this episode was Aaron saying that to Negan, talking about Lucille, talking about his wife. Um, when you're, when you got nothing left to lose and you are emotionally spent and you got nothing left, you you hit as hard as you can with what you know is going to hurt the most. And Aaron doing that, I know Aaron has lost a lot and Aaron has been through a lot, but I did not see that line coming from him. Negan's response to that too shocked me. I would have thought Negan would have like attacked Aaron and all of his newfound fucking morals or whatever is going on with Negan would have been lost, but he didn't. And he stayed for Aaron after Aaron had the problem with the, the moss or whatever it was in his eyes. I just, I don't know. Now maybe that is part of a bigger play, maybe because when they get back, Aaron can vouch for Negan and be like, yeah, he saved me and he didn't have to. So it is a smart move. But it does show growth on Negan's part. And a lot of people don't want to hear that. I know a lot of people hate Negan. I get it. I understand why. Lots of people can't let go what happened. But you do have to remember there has been a gigantic time jump in the show. So for the people in the show, they have lived with this truth for longer than viewers have. They have dealt with the consequences for longer than the viewers have. And they haven't let go. Like you can see Aaron still has resentment for Negan. You can see pretty much everyone still has resentment for Negan. No one wants to be his buddy or his friend. They're just around him because he's there. He has a part to play, he's here. He's not one of them, but he's included. And I think that you can, you can enjoy watching a character as a viewer. You can enjoy watching the changes and the growth, even if you don't love them, even if you don't want to forgive them. Like for me, I don't forgive what Negan did with Glenn and um, Abraham. I don't. But I can still watch him and go, God damn, he's a fantastically written character. Jeffrey does a great job. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I've loved watching Negan all along, but you do have people that are dead set against it. So I think, <clears throat> I think with Negan, this redemption arc is really interesting. And what's going to be even more interesting is watching how both viewers and characters in the show deal with that redemption arc. Because they have been teasing it, that redemption, that whole, oh, I've changed, I'm whatever. And I guess him and Aaron was our first real taste of seeing that. But yeah, like, you can enjoy a character, you can watch a character, you can, and as, as a character, you can work with other people without forgiving them. You can move past what happened without forgetting. And I think that is what's happening with Negan. I mean, you know, Judith has said it, where she, when she was getting help with her homework, like, she doesn't have any interest in being his buddy or his pal. She was like, you know, he can help me with my numbers, whatever. Something else as well I wanted to touch on was the whole scene between Eugene and Rosita because wow. Now Rosita has been trying to make it clear to Eugene that she she's not interested in a relationship with him for a while. She has. She's a fucking kid. You know what someone else. She has dated other guys. She's kind of made it clear. And that moment of clarity with Eugene where he realised oh like you're sleep deprived so what you're saying must be true because you've got no filter. That was a tough pill to swallow. You know I can respect that. Being rejected isn't fun, it hurts. It's just the fact that he said like, oh, well, I got to admit I wasn't any friends with you because I thought I was going to get with you. That's not an all right mindset. I understand approaching somebody if you're romantically interested in them and trying to be friends with them, trying to kind of form a connection to see if you guys can work, to see if you guys are going to date. But when you've been friends with somebody for a long ass time like Eugene and Rosita have been, and your little goal, your little plan the entire time is no, no, I'll eventually wear them down and eventually we'll date. When that's your plan, when you know the other person doesn't want that, that's shitty. It is shitty. Now I don't give a shit what you want to say about that. If you want to say that I'm a freak or I'm a fucking whatever, hearing that, that, that shit ain't attractive. That shit just is not appealing whatsoever. And it just, it sucks. It sucks for both of them. Eugene finally realising that that plan just was not going to work and poor Rosita finding out that that's why they were friends. It, it hurts for both of them and I don't know where they're going to go from there, I suppose. Eugene has been an interesting character though because I used to absolutely love him. I used to love Eugene, particularly when he fucked with the guns with the saviours. I was like, my man, oh my God, look at you go. And then he just kind of, I don't know, he fizzled out for me. And I was like, oh yeah, that's Eugene, you know, whatever. But people really seem to absolutely hate Eugene. But yeah, that, that's just my thoughts on that. Dante is another interesting as one, uh, one as well. Getting to see him open up um, to Sadiq. See him talk about his past. See him talk about how he overcame things that Sadiq had overcome. 
obviously they're going to strike up a friendship. Duh. But I like now that we're getting more kind of um, info on Dante and he's being fleshed out a little bit and he's coming to life more as a character. I like that. Sadiq as well. There's a lot of theories going around about Sadiq. Everyone's saying maybe Alpha made Sadiq behead them um, with those flashbacks that we've seen before with the heads were put on the spikes and stuff. A lot of people think that Sadiq was the one that had to de-head people. That's not the word. What is it? Decapitate people um, in order to put the heads on the spikes. That's why he's struggling as he is. That's why he's having these horrible flashbacks. Why he's freaking out every now and again. He's having these panic attacks. I think it's interesting whatever road they're going down with him because I don't think we've ever really truly seen... I mean, we've seen Survivor's Guilt and we've seen stuff like that before, but Sadiq seems to be to a whole new level. My guy can't even function. Like, he is not in a good place mentally. So I hope... I just hope that we get to see that explored and I hope that whatever it is that he is okay because I, I do quite like him as a character. Even though we did have that horrible spider scene. <laughs> it's not his fault. I forgive him. But yeah, I think those were just some of my initial thoughts. I know there's going to be a lot of comments with, oh, you didn't mention, oh, you forgot to blah, blah, blah. But those were just some of my thoughts that I wanted to touch on and I wanted to expand upon a small bit more. Yeah, I'm really loving this, loving this season. I think this is my favourite episode so far. I've said it already about the horror and how it's like foggy and scary, whatever. This is probably my favourite episode that we've seen so far from the season, even though I really did like the premiere. This one just felt different. And I, I am such a sucker for like, character arcs and and giving characters more more dialogue more personality more screen time rather than just you know action and all that kind of stuff i do love action and seeing people fight and blah 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 but at the end of the day it's the characters that i love it's the reason i love the show so i like that we're getting a lot more a lot more personal very up close and personal moments with certain characters so yeah those are just my thoughts hope you guys enjoyed i know many of you have already with my previous video but if you had any thoughts that you'd like to bring up or touch on then drop them in the comments and if you want to see more content you guys know i have a patreon where i upload reactions to the walking dead vikings stranger things game of thrones <gasps> blah 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 so yeah the link to that is in the description down below and yeah i will talk to you guys soon